Hi, my name is Eric Lutz. Allow me to quickly introduce myself. In September 2012, while browsing courses on Coursera, I kind of by accident bumped into the EPFL course titled Functional Programming Principles in Scala. I signed up for it, followed the course, and got very excited about the Scala language. Since that time, I've been developing in Scala and have been teaching a lot of Scala courses. If we now fast forward to mid-February 2021, the time of recording of this video, we're at the brink of the release of Scala 3.00 Release Candidate 1. So, pretty exciting times ahead for sure. With that, let's get to the topic of today's video. As for any developer, a typical task is to set up and maintain a development environment. I'm going to talk about and demonstrate a tool called Coursier, which simplifies this task a lot. In the demo that I will give, I will set up a Scala development environment from scratch using Coursier. Now, Coursier has way more features than the ones I'm going to talk about in this video. For example, it can also be used to perform artifact resolution or to launch applications, and we will uh, cover these in future videos. Let's have a look at the problem we're trying to solve with Coursier. So you might ask, which components will one typically need in a Scala development environment? Well, because Scala is a JVM language, obviously you will need a Java virtual machine. There's plenty of choice for this these days. And apart from choosing a certain Java version, you could choose between say, Adopt OpenJDK or GraalVM, to name just two. Another component you will find is the Scala compiler, which will turn your source code into binary artifacts. Uh, you will most probably also find a so-called REPL, which is an acronym for Read, Evaluate, Print Loop, and which can be used to perform small to medium interactive coding experiments. Finally, another component you will need is a build tool. One option for this is SBT, also known as the Scala build tool. So now, imagine we have installed all these components, then we still need to keep them up to date, which can be a hassle. Another thing to maintain are your application's external de uh, dependencies and their corresponding artifacts. Downloading these and Caching is also something that Coursier does for us. So quite a lot of stuff to handle and maintain, and sometimes it can be difficult to see the wood for the trees. So let's now talk a little bit more about Coursier. Coursier is an open source project created by Alexandre Archambault, and it has received quite a bit of support from the Scala Center and the Scala community in general. Apart from using it to set up our development environment, it can list transitive dependencies of libraries, it does artifact resolution and caching, and it can launch applications that have been published using a Maven or Ivy style. After you've started Coursier, you will probably want to take a look at the available documentation. An absolute must read in that area is Alec, uh, one of Alexandre's uh, blog post titled Single Command Scala Setup. So with that, let's, uh, and before doing the demonstration, um, let's have a look at the documentation. So here's the uh, blog article I, I was referring to, and don't worry about the link, we'll post it uh, together with the video. But this article uh, goes in uh, great detail about uh, how to set up Coursier, which is something we will do today, how to manage JVMs, how to manage applications, and 
yeah, it's it's pretty it's pretty concise, but also giving you a lot of to the point information. So we will actually start using in a moment the instructions to get things started, but we'll get to that in a minute. Another thing we want to have a look at probably is the source code itself. And Corsier, Corsier is actually a project that consists of multiple sub-projects. And here we're at the uh, Umbrella project, uh, Corsier. And so, for example, here we find the Corsier uh, source code project itself. You can see it's uh, quite an active uh, project. It has roughly 3,500 commits. Uh, we're presently at the time of recording at version 2.0.12. Quite a few uh, contributors, as you can see. And in the README, which is pretty short, there's actually a link to the documentation. So if we open the documentation, we get to this site. Uh, we see at the bottom a link back to the uh, blog post article I recommended. We can search the website. There's a link back to the source code. Uh, there's a series of blog articles. And then we have the thing we came here for, which is the actual documentation. It gives you a description of you know, why, uh, for example, Corsia was built to begin with, who's using it, a number of plugins, and then a detailed overview of the command line interface. For example, if we go to Java, we see how, uh, in great detail, how we can manage our JVMs. So with that introduction finished, uh, we can actually get to the meat of this, uh, of this talk or video, and we will execute these four steps to uh, bootstrap the installation. For that, I'm going to open a terminal and I'm on a Mac so I can use iTerm2. And what we will do is we will uh, go to a temp folder and we will issue this first command. So this will actually download what is called CS, which is the uh, native launcher for Corsier. And once that's done, we can have a look back at the instructions. So we need to make this uh, command executable, and then we need to run the setup command, and then we remove the copy of CS that we use to bootstrap the process. So let's do that. And then we'll run, uh, sorry, we'll run CS, and we'll give it the setup option. Now, as I, I didn't actually say that, but I, I'm starting on a, uh, from a clean slate. I actually wiped my uh, developed environment before uh, recording this video. And one of the things that uh, CS tells me is that there is no Java environment installed. So now we have two options. Either we say yes, and then it will install by default um, Java 8. Uh, or we can say no, and then we can install uh, whatever version of Java we want uh, later. So I'm actually going to not accept the default response uh, because I, I'm not interested right now in installing Java 8. Um, and we get to the next question, which is, should it should CS adapt our um, environment, shell environment? And I'm going to accept the default answer. So now we get to the second step, which is um, where CS is actually going to install different applications. So it installs, uh, starts with installing Ammonite, which is uh, one of the repls that we have at our disposal. Then it installs itself, uh, but in a location that will be stable. Uh, then we have the uh, Corsi application itself. Then we next thing is the Scala repl. We have the Scala compiler. We have uh, the Scala build tool. We also get the Scala build tool client with it, which is new since uh, SBT 1.4.0. And we have a last program or application, which is Scala format, which as the name suggests, allows us to format Scala source code. So the 
Environment is changed. Uh, we have CS installed. The last step we need to do, don't forget that because it may trip you up later, is to remove the uh, CS uh, bootstrap launcher, let's say. And of course, if I try to execute CS, it won't find it because we have to reload our environment. And the easiest way to do that is to start up a fresh terminal. And indeed, we see that we have uh, installed <coughs> um, Coursier 2.0.12. But for example, if we uh, obviously, if we try to launch uh, Java, that doesn't work because we chose not to install it. And the same thing goes for Scala. You see that it finds Scala, but there is no uh, Java runtime present, so that won't work. So first thing we need to do is install Java now. So let's do that, and therefore we can use um, uh, Coursier itself. <clears throat> and we will, well, well, first actually we will uh, ask um, we will ask CS to get us the available version for installations, versions of, JV, of the JVM. So as you see, um, this is quite a long list of different possible uh, JVMs we can install. But we're going to use the Adopt Open JDK and we're going to go for uh, version 11. And I'm just going to select this part. We can choose the, to select the whole part, then we have a very precise selection of the JDK we want. So with that, we're going to say CS Java. We're going to say which version of the JVM we want. I'm going to paste this. And then I'm going to say, OK, set up my environment so that it becomes the default version. That's what dash dash setup does and it will adapt the uh, shell environment to point to the right version. So as soon as I hit enter, the bulky download, uh, uh, as we can say, um, is, is, has started. <clears throat> so we're getting close to the end of the download process, which may be slower if you have a slower uh, internet link. And with that, you know, it's installed and it tells us that uh, we should probably uh, refresh our environment, which again, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm a bit lazy, so I start up a new environment and if we ask Java what version it is, then it says indeed 11.09 and we see, if you remember from the list, it installed the last available version for that. So now we can, uh, fire up the Scala REPL. We, we noticed that we are using Scala 2.13.4. At the time uh, of recording, this is the latest uh, stable version. And we also see that it is using uh, uh, Java 11. So right now I can show you a quick demo. Uh, for example, this very sophisticated uh, calculation which uh, is correct, turning, returning the correct result. We can also say, take a list of some numbers and we can create a new list with each element being, uh, say, eight times the value of the original number. And we see we get a list with 16, 48 and 72, which is correct. Now let's quit the Scala REPL, which we can do by hitting Control D. And we can do the same thing in Ammonite. So if we say, you know, repeat the first calculation, get the same result. And of course, if we do this, we get the same result. And that's it. So I've kind of come to the more or less to the to the end or near the end. One thing that might be interesting to point out is that. CS allows you address the aspect of maintaining, maintaining your environment. So, for example, at some point in time, I want to update my uh, CS version. I can actually ask CS to do that itself. So I just run CS update CS. And as can be expected, there is no new version of CS. We can do the same for the other tools that we have installed. And for example, we do CS update Scala and there's nothing new. 
Um, what else can we do? Yeah, we could, for example, say at some point in time, I want to install a new version of Java. Say, for example, suppose we want to install Java 14 and I'm going to choose the uh, Adopt Open JDK. <clears throat> then I just run this command and I can either do setup will make, which will switch the, to the, this, uh, make this version the default version or I can do env, which will simply uh, start, you know, getting the getting the JDK, and then it will simply display you what uh, what you need to change in your environment to uh, to switch to that version on a temporary basis. Say. So we're almost complete. It finishes the installation, and. It should now say, you know, these are the instructions that you need to your environment. So right now, nothing has changed. The default version is still what it was. So if I do Java version, you see that it's still Java 11. If I now want to make the other version permanent, I do, I repeat this command and I do setup. And that's it. Uh, now, obviously, I need to refresh my environment. And if I do Java version, We'll see, or you should see that indeed we have Java 14. And if we run Scala, for example, Scala REPL, we'll see that we still have Scala 2.13.4, but we have switched to um, we have switched to Java for to using Java 14. And with that, we've come to the end of this session. And as you've seen. Setting up a Scala development environment with Coursier is really a no-brainer. I hope you enjoyed this session and stay tuned for more episodes on Coursier. Bye.